Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright, and I am the Resourceful CEO. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the Resourceful CEO channel. So today I'm here to talk to you about five ways to ob obtain funding or five sources of additional funding for your business. Now there's myriad ways to finance your business, and I talk about them in both of my books. Um, let's shameless plug here. Solving the Capital Equation, Financing Solutions for Small Businesses. And my more recent one, The Funding is Out There, Access the Cash You Need to Impact Your Business. <laughs> if you want an autographed copy, contact me. But anyways, the uh, so we're talking about five different ways and um, this is a good exercise to get you to think creatively. Lots of times people think, especially minority business owners, meaning especially black business owners and Hispanic business owners, we often think about, um, we often encounter difficulty. I'm not saying that it's a given, I'm just saying that we often do. And so what I have found for my clients is that we will often tap like two or three different sources in order to get all the money that we need at that particular time. And then over time, the bank may, uh, our bank may provide us with, you know, the entire line of credit or term loan that we need. Then again, they may not. But anyways, there's different sources out there. And the point is to use them strategically to your advantage. So let's start with the first one is bartering. And I want people to be very clear that bartering or swapping is a, a gap that's generally accepted accounting principle approved. If you're using accrual accounting, it's revenue when recognized and expenses when incurred. So the, uh, but what you can barter directly or you can barter using a third party, which then gives you more room to barter. And let me just go back to that. Enron, uh, I used to work at Enron. I left before they, you know, before the company fell apart, but I did and we did swaps. And I remember we swapped space on the fiber optic line coming from Japan to California for space running from, uh, I think it was from California to uh, Illinois. Don't quote me though. But anyways, we did things like that. We were we often swapped space on fiber optic lines or other kinds of uh, things for broadband. And all of that was included in our financial statements. It recognizes revenue or as an expense when it was incurred. So again, this, <laughs> <laughs> For some of you may go, is that really legitimate, Tiffany? You're using Enron as an example. But yes, it is a legitimate example, but I figured I'd give you an example from my personal experience. But yes, it was legitimate. I never participated in anything untowards. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, you can, but here's the thing about bartering make sure that it is financially feasible for you. Don't barter, don't sell yourself short. You need to make sure that if you are, if you're swapping 30,000 worth of services, for instance, if you are a uh, construction firm, you want to swap $30,000 worth of, of you know, basement renovation services for $30,000 worth of marketing services from a marketing firm. That's how you do it. The next one, number two, is form strategic partnerships. When you form a strategic partnership, you can tap financing that you uh, you, you may be able to tap financing. I mean, for instance, if you form a marketing partnership, then instead of just offsetting the cost, you're 
your marketing partner might actually incur all of the costs because it's a benefit to them and it's in their budget. And then you kind of, then you don't have to um, pay for that. But what I've also seen in strategic partnerships is once I had a client who obtained a $3 million zero interest loan from a significantly larger corporate partner who wanted to differentiate their product um, because they sold into school systems. So they wanted to differentiate their products. And so what they did was they packaged in my client's uh, software offering as a, as a means of entry. And again, to differentiate themselves from their competitors. So that's a, that was not something that was originally thought of when they first, when my client first approached the uh, corporate partner as a strategic partner. But large corporations often have a lot of money and they are looking for ways to compete. And so again, look at who would benefit the most from your product or service and go after them. The other thing is that a lot of the corporations have in-house investment funds, but they typically only invest in businesses or that provide them with an entry into an area that they are considering, but they don't want to, you know, they don't want to invest the R and D or they don't know how it's going to pan out. So they'll invest in a smaller entity and see how they do. And then, um, and so that saves them a lot of time and effort and money. <laughs> okay, I did kind of overlap number two with number three. Number three is strategic investors. And so you could be in a strategic partnership and that partner could become a strategic investor or you can just find a strategic investor. So you can partner with the a large company that would benefit from your services, or you can just approach that company outright, like I said, especially if they have an in-house investment arm and talk to them about investing in your firm. First, you have to figure out what their criteria is, <laughs> and then you have to make sure you approach the right people. But that's a very good, uh, that's an excellent means of finding funding that is definitely non-traditional. A fourth way of accessing cash or accessing money to grow your business is through tapping your suppliers. And people don't think about that. People just think about suppliers as providing a, you know, a 30 day, 30 day terms. But I've had clients get 90 day terms from their suppliers. And I've also had people or clients get, um, customers get um, 12 to 18 month loans from their supplier. So if you are like, for instance, trying to build an additional product line and you already have a relationship with this one supplier, but you have had difficulty getting the cash to purchase the inventory, well, that if that supplier is strong enough, they may be interested in providing you with a short to medium term loan um, in, in the form of inventory financing or a supplier loan in order you in order for you to be able to procure their, uh, you know, procure the goods or raw materials, finished goods, whatever from them. Um, and, or they may want to do a small investment, but typically I find that suppliers are there, they don't want to invest They'd rather lend to you. Typically, supply, supplier terms, when they decide to give you a loan or provide you with a loan, are, are pretty good, similar to a bank. They don't, I haven't seen them try to gouge the, so if a bank is offering, for instance, 6%, they'll be somewhere in the 6 to 8% range. Um, so, again, very reasonable because their risk, because they know you, they've worked with you for a while and they know their product and they know the market, their risk is mitigated. 
Oh yes, before I continue, remember to like this video and subscribe to The Resourceful CEO. Finally, if you're making an acquisition, this is seller financing, so it only applies if you're making an acquisition, a full or partial acquisition, and you are seeking funding, look at the look at the seller. I mean, the seller knows their business more. They're going to be much more, they're going to think their business is a lot less risky than anyone else. Um, and if they don't think that, then you need to run for the hills. <laughs> they're trying to offload a dog, but no. <laughs> but the with the seller, the seller understands the business, the market, the industry, competitors, and so on. And so they'll typically provide you with a loan. Lots of times they'll say, no, no seller financing, but as they but that's because they they don't know you. That's typically what they just say up front. But as they get to know you better and feel more comfortable and and believe that you can grow the business and not run it into the ground, then they'll be much more amenable to uh, seller financing. And that could be in a an actual loan, you know, over the next three to 10 years, depending. It could be a an earnout uh, to bridge the gap between what they say the business is worth and what <laughs> and what it actually is worth today. <laughs> the um, they could you could they could retain a small ownership stake and you buy them out later by that remaining 10% or 20% ownership stake later. Uh, there's a number, you, we can get creative with seller financing, but the point is, is that it's an option. And lots of times people, business owners don't think of it. Existing business owners or new entry business owners don't think of it. They see no seller financing and they, <laughs> it's like, it was like, a, they're like kids when the, when their parents said, um, when their parents had a united front and said no, and then, you know, they just went skulking to their room. But it's more like when your parents, when one parent said no, and you'd run behind and ask the other parent, see if they said yes, <laughs> you kind of twist it a bit. That's what seller financing is. They'll say no up front, but if you kind of wear them down, talk to other management team members, maybe even talk to the spouse, <laughs> you can often get uh, seller financing and get very good terms. I am the resourceful CEO, Tiffany C. Wright. And please remember to like this video and subscribe.